Norway is a country powered by renewable energy. We also have Statkraft established as the largest generator of renewable energy in Europe. We met their CEO, Mr. Christian Rinning Tønnesen, where he explains his views and perspectives on the ongoing energy transition, the effects of COVID-19, and some thoughts on new technologies. He explains how it all comes down to powering possibilities. We're in the midst of an energy transition where many energy producers must adapt their portfolios significantly to meet today's climate goals. Statkraft is already the largest generator of renewable energy in Europe. Could you please start by explaining how you see the ongoing energy transition? Three quarters of all climate related emissions in the world comes from burning of fossil fuels. At the same time, the energy demand in the world is still increasing, including supplying electricity to about 1 billion people that still don't have access to electricity. And we also need to avoid that this planet is reaching a breaking point in temperature. And to achieve this, renewable energy is not only a part of the solution, it is the solution. The best way to produce more renewable energy is to make sure that as high as possible this is produced as electricity generated by renewable electricity sources. And we believe in our base scenario in Stuttgart that two-thirds of all electricity produced in 2050 worldwide is renewable. In our low emission scenario we think the share of renewable electricity is 80%. Can you say a bit what this means in specific to Startkraft as a company? Yeah, in Startkraft we uh, have made a corporate decision that all our investments shall be in renewable energy. And we are focusing on Europe, where we already are the largest producer of renewable energy, and South America and India. And we invest in hydropower, wind power, solar power, district heating, biofuels and hydrogen. So our strategy is to invest in these renewable technologies in three continents and combine it with our market operations so that we integrate the new energy in the markets in a profitable and smooth way. Building on the situation we are in now, there's been a lot of discussion as to whether COVID will speed up or maybe perhaps slow down the energy transition. Could you please share your perspectives and reflections on this? What we have seen when the pandemic came is that the energy demand worldwide dropped. Uh, but the production of renewable energy continued with the same volumes as before because they are the most cost competitive sources of energy. So they were not hit volume wise. Prices went down uh, also uh, for electricity of all types. Later now, uh, over the last months, uh, energy markets are coming back. And if we, if we have a look at the share prices of uh, the listed companies around the world, those with a high share of renewables have had uh, a good share price development and has uh, actually come back to higher prices than was the case in the beginning of the year in most cases. Going forward, uh, of course, it does not help for public financing with the pandemic, so it's more difficult than before to prioritize green investments. But the stimulus packages that are coming out now have a green profile, profile in many cases, like in the EU, where um, there's just an increased uh, political will to prioritize renewable energy. And that is also the case for several other states and areas in the world. So all in all, I would say um, it makes it more challenging to finance, but it increases the, the willingness to go in that direction. You have made some recent bold moves and investments in electric transport infrastructure, in hydrogen and in battery technology. 
could you please share some of your expectations to the likely significance of this with regards to the energy transition? Both electric transport and hydrogen and batteries at large are important elements of the whole green transition. We expect in Startkraft that uh, an electric car will be cheaper to produce than a traditional fossil car already five years from now in 2025 without any subsidies. We also expect the share of new car sales of electric vehicles to rise sharply and 15 years from now in 2035 more than half of all new cars sold in the world will be electric and by 2050 it will be almost all new normal passenger cars. So this will be a revolution of the same type as going from steamships to combustion engine. Uh, in Startkraft, in that business area, we have um, engaged in Norway where we own Grön Kontakt, which is the second largest provider of charging services, and we are developing also electric vehicle charging in Sweden and in Germany and in the UK. Hydrogen is at an earlier stage, both globally and in our business development, but we believe that hydrogen will have a, a big share, uh, an important share, maybe 15 percent of uh, total energy demand in the EU for instance by mid-century as well and uh, here uh, the need for hydrogen will be in applications where electricity stored in batteries cannot do the job it will be long distance shipping uh, long distance transportation and industrial applications of various kinds what we are doing here is we are running pilot projects in all these areas of road transport, sea transport and industry and we will have to find out where the profitability possibilities are the best and it needs to go together with stimulus packages from governments to get these new te technologies going. When it comes to battery technologies, apart from being part of electric vehicle uh, of course, they, need, uh, they are needed in the electricity system to stabilize the system itself. So in Startcraft we are engaged in battery installations in UK and Ireland uh, which are two of the systems in the world that are experiencing the challenges with intermittent wind and solar at the earliest. So what we learn here at the British Islands we can copy around the world uh, going forward in, in what the future needs of a very sophisticated uh, operation of the electricity systems in the future. What are your perspectives on the future of work and which competence and skills do you expect the energy industry will need going forward? The energy industry will need deep technical knowledge on, on several areas as well as good human skills. Not only do we need to master a, an energy system of the future that is dominantly renewable and therefore need to handle intermittency of wind and solar in a very technical advanced way. But it's also a full transition of the energy system itself which is dependent on good cooperation between companies, governments and, and many uh, parts of, of the whole society. So the ability to, to cooperate, uh, have managers but also each single employee of any company having that communication skill set and willingness to, to um, communicate with, with others is going to be extremely important. So I, I should summarize it. Good technical insights, good capabilities to cooperate and uh, good motivation.